Live from the Quadigian capital, this is the GBN Television News. GBN, covering you from the Grenadine Island chain to Brooklyn, New York, via the World Wide Web on www.gbn.gd. The news headlines is brought to you compliments. GUT Credit Union. In my dreams with GUT. They're the ones for me. I'm reaching my dreams with GUT. They're the ones for me. Since 1983, they've been stopping the country, and we like all their financing, giving the people what they want, what they need, what they love. Come and join the family that's here for you all the way. From birth to graduation, your first job to your home and your car through your golden years. The GT Credit Union has been actively supporting nation building through its many sponsorships and programs, including Financial Literacy Quiz, Pass the Torch Calypso Program, Junior Cooperatives in Secondary Schools, CPEA, and the Time CC Grants. The Credit Union has helped many people make their dreams come true. Let them help you with yours. You don't have to be a teacher to be a member. So what are you waiting for? GUT Credit Union It's where you belong This news this evening, Akim Andrew facing fresh fraud charges four months after lenience was extended by the court. Reports of possible charges against a family member who reported Fort Judy fracas over the death of a dog. Grenada's Prime Minister speaks of moral responsibility as Liat's ring in for Sir Everton Weeks, one of the famous three Ws. So, a pregnant woman dies during protests in Trinidad, and top experts say no guarantee U.S. will have effective COVID-19 vaccine. We'll bring in the details of those and other stories in just, just a moment. This is the News at 7. Get high making money moves with the NLA's new ace. You are automatically a winner. Scratch away to win the top prize of $10,000. Win easy with Scratch. Must be 18 or older to play. play. And welcome to the news at 7. First off this evening, there's a new twist to the tale. Reports making the round say that charges could be pending against one of the Smiths who got tangled in a dust-up over a vehicular accident involving a dog. Sherry Ann Blackman Stevens has been following the twists and turns, and she's sending us this report this evening. Sherry, what can you tell us? Well, what I can tell you is that there's never been a dull moment as far as this last seven days have been with this case. I am following reports that charges could be laid against Nicole Smith, couple at Fort Judy last week. It is being claimed that Mrs. Smith physically attacked Sarah Hutton, the wife of Donald Kavanaugh. Those two have been charged for allegedly attacking Smith's husband at Fort Judy last week Thursday. I reached out to the head of the community relations being laid against Mrs. Smith. We then contacted Mrs. Smith. She had no such information and directed me to speak with her attorney, Derek Sylvester. When I telephoned him at his office this afternoon, Sylvester's response was, and I quote, I have no such instructions, end of quote. The attorney did, however, say that he has since filed and served a civil suit against all four members of the family who allegedly attacked Mr. Evan Smith. Kavanaugh and Hutton will appear in court on July 28th. Cherry and Blackman Stephen, GBN News. Akim Andrew is facing a new set of charges. His story of pretending to be a medical doctor earlier this year generated quite a stir. He escaped imprisonment as the court granted him clemency. However, he's back before the court on Thursday, charged again for fraud. Cherry and Blackman Stephen continues to cover the court beat and has this second dispatch. And four summary charges of practicing medicine without being registered. He was sentenced by Chief Magistrate Teddy St. Louis at the St. George's Magistrates Court on February 28th. Now he is in trouble with the law again. He was arrested and charged Wednesday for the offense of fraud by false pretense. Police have not disclosed details about the incident, which led to this latest charge. However, it has been alleged that a youngster in February, the 22-year-old of Loretta St. John, was given a suspended sentence for practicing medicine without a license. 
He was charged with fraud by false pretense, sentenced to 100 hours of community service, or six months in prison to be a police officer. Andrew will appear in court on Thursday in St. George to answer the new charge of fraud. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell will meet this week with Liad workers and their union representatives separately to discuss their grievances. That's according to a press statement issued by the government. This comes as she fills us in. The meeting with the workers comes on the heels of an urgent caucus of CARICOM heads of government on mentions needed to be a preliminary discussion to understand the plight of LIAT employees. Dr. Mitchell said while stakeholder governments have no legal responsibility for the fate of the workers, there is some degree of moral responsibility. Subsequent to arranging the meeting with LIAT workers, the Prime Minister received correspondence from the Grenada Tech Technical and Allied Workers Union requesting a meeting. Dr. Mitchell has agreed to meet with the union representatives, but his meeting with the workers will proceed as planned. OGBN, he looks forward to the meeting with Prime Minister Mitchell and hopes he will be given the assurance that workers will receive what is due to them. As the bargaining agent of the Liat staff in Grenada, we felt it was absolutely important to cross our T's and dot our I's to ensure that we have all the relevant information as to whatever it is that may be owed to the world. To also seek a meeting with Prime Minister Mitchell as Prime Minister of Grenada, the ends with him, so as to be given some assurances regarding what will be due to the workers. And this has to do with severance, there are some outstanding matters, salary increases, etc., etc. We felt it was necessary to draw this to his attention. Meanwhile, Antigua Observers AM on Monday said the stakeholders are seeking a piece of the pie, which is very dangerous. He wants that the formula to be used to determine who should be given compassionate payment and how much should be based. NDC caretaker for Cariquin Petit Martinique, Tevin Andrew, is calling for the release of a feasibility study of the Hills viewing. However, the minister says that statement is incorrect. Karen Blackman Stephen tells us this story. I want to take this opportunity to challenge the member of parliament for Caracol and PD Martinic, Martin Stewart, to make whatever reports they claim that, take, that has taken place to the public. NDC caretaker for Karakou and Pity Martinique, Tevin Andrew, is calling on the parliamentary representative for Karakou and Pity Martinique, Kendra Matu and Stewart, to make the feasibility study of the Hillsborough jetty available to the public. When the Hillsborough jetty was relocated to Tyrrell Bay in 2016, government said a feasibility study was done and a decision to relocate the jetty was made out of concern for the safety and security of the people. However, according to Andrew, when asked to show the report at a meeting in Kariakou with the business community last Tuesday, Matthew and Stewart said it was not for public consumption. The end of the jetty is not structurally sound and whatever the case may be. So the business community said, well, if that's the case, can you, can you show us, can you give us a copy of this report? The MP said, no, it is not for public consumption. It is not, it's not, it's not our business. Government began talks about relocating the jetty in 2015, and the estimated cost given was between three to four million U.S. dollars. Speaking on Tuesdays to the point with host Blossom Alexis Welsh, Andrew said he doubts there is a report. In addition, he said the property is greatly underutilized. The only difference is, is that there is a lot of space, and it's a beautiful facility, don't get me wrong, but what is the space all about? because container ship can't come in, There's the, the cruise ship can't come in. He said he is fed up of decisions made without input by the people of Kariakou and Pity Martinique. The folks in Grenada don't have as much interest of Kariakou and Pity Martinique than we that live here. So those consult me food and you make a decision already. Andrew told GBN he believes the people of Kariakou and Pity Martinique need a council for the town of Hillsborough, tale and I quote, I have spoken and was therefore not in a position to disclose content. The report was not commissioned by the Ministry of Kariakou and Pity Martinique Affairs, but rather by the Grenada Port Authority, which is responsible for all ports and jetties across the country. Unquote. Cherry and Blackman Stephen, GBN News. 
This is News at 7. Still to come from us, calls sounded again for the reopening of the public library. Do stay with us. We'll have that story and more. Now more than ever, Flo is working hard to keep you connected to the things that matter most. Your family, your work, and your favorite entertainment. We are also providing Flow Study free of charge so students can stay connected and up to date with their schoolwork. And because your safety is our highest priority, you can manage your account from the safety of your own home through the MyFlow app. We are here for you, keeping you connected. Our superheroes are all among us. They don't wear capes nor have superpowers. In fact, they appear to be quite ordinary. They are the ones who provide us with food. They are our farmers, our grocery store workers, our vendors. They are our fishermen. They are the ones who heal us, our doctors and medical practitioners. They are the ones who protect us, our police officers. They are all the other essential workers who make this period bearable. And how can we forget our teachers, dedicated to educating our children no matter the circumstance? To everyone who is doing their part to make sure the wheel keeps turning, Ariza says, thank you. Grenlec is by email at customer support at grenlec.com. WhatsApp on 473-405-6931. Or call 237. Select option 3, extension 311. Like to visit. You will be contacted within two business days to confirm your appointment. Together, we can keep each other safe. Together, we will smile again. Pharmacy offers both wholesale and retail pharmaceutical and over-the-counter products. We have the most competitive and affordable prices. We are the agents for Vic Plus Multivitamin for healthy everyday lifestyle and Sinatogen powder. Hills and Valley Pharmacy supplies the best quality, name brand clinical products such as Rescue Oil, Bio Oil, Neutrogena, Aveno and Clarosol. We offer the most convenient opening hours. Our telephone numbers are 435-6904 or 6903. Remember, at Hills and Valley Pharmacy, your health is our business. We care. Now open, Hills and Health is our business. There's a reason we have been here to serve you for the past 40 years. A reason we have continued to grow. A reason we have continued to celebrate. That reason is you. We have been here to help you plan for your future and here to help you celebrate your achievements. We continue to be here even when the future seems unclear because one thing is certain, you're the reason we care. Rip. Tropical shipping is fast and reliable. Always on time, safe and affordable. Friendly staff here to connect you. Tropical worldwide, you must get you. Shop online and you get it on time. Hassle free to meet your deadline. Consolidate any size, any load with tropical shipping. So we ship everything. I can't wait to ship with tropical. I can't wait. Go back in the big clothes. No, I cannot wait to ship with tropical. A local agents, George F. Huggins and Company, Grenada Limited. A telephone number 440-8787. Or visit our website at Shipping. Committed to Island Life. Free groceries for one year when you shop at the food fair. Up to $8,400 in groceries. Every $50 spent between June 15th and September 30th gives you the opportunity to enter into the grand prize draw for October 9th, 2020. Third prize, free groceries groceries for three months, second prize, free groceries for six months, and the grand prize, free groceries every month for one year. There will be exciting giveaways monthly, Food Fear, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. 
This promotion is sponsored by Food Fair Supermarket, Dutch Lady, Chief, Promo, Danny and Supreme. Social distancing and hygienic protocols will be maintained at all times. GBN leads, the others follow. This segment is brought to you by Republic Bank. There's a reason we have been here to serve you for the past 40 years. A reason we have continued to grow. A reason we have continued to celebrate. That reason is you. We have been here to help you plan for your future and here to help you celebrate your achievements. Even when the future seems unclear. Public Bank, we're the one for you. Welcome back to the News at 7. A petition is in circulation online. It's clamoring for the restoration of the public library. Petitioners say COVID-19 has made it quite evident that the library needs to be restored. We get details in this Joseph and Mackie Smith report. Population needs sound education. These lyrics of the great mighty Sparrow speak to the significance of education. A supporter of a petition to restore the dilapidated structure of the National Library shares similar sentiments to those profound lyrics. This supporter believes that the National Library plays a crucial role in the education of a nation's people, the country. It's a very important aspect, especially for educating the population, not just children, but for anybody of any age. Another supporter of the petition highlighted the importance of the National Library. It is important for accessing information, fostering and development of our minds, and also for recording national events. I'll just give an example of the revolution. They don't want to have different, different stories or different, or different um, thing will happen toward the revolution. Proponents have advanced various reasons for its restoration. Governing bodies are the powers above development of our nation education because it would be, it would be, it would it would minimize Ill illiteracy. Nineteen brings into sharp focus the need to have the library restored. I know during the COVID nineteen having to switch to online, or, you know our issues, and we're seeing that we have a lot of distractions at home and having to take exams. So during these difficult times, you know, people have realized that they really is accessible for a lot of students would benefit, you know, the students of Grenada where they can have a safe place to go and study. While some people are calling on governing bodies to other traditional elements should remain, while others feel that it should be modernized. Joseph McKee Smith, GBN News. That was a really nice story there, and you're not too young to know um, when the public library was in existence at, 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 at the Karanash. Well, I haven't used it, but I do agree that it should be restored. It's probably and put, you know, have computers and so on. Um, what are your thoughts here? I believe that will be an added benefit. All right, so we'll see how that pans out and we'll see where the petition goes. Beverly, I think you have something to do with Sogasam Sibi? Yes, the village of Subiza in St. Andrew was one of the first areas to be invaded by the Sogasam seaweed for yet another year. However, an environmental expert is seeing a positive side to the invasive seaweed. Christina John reports. By an a disruption to fisher folk plying their trade. This posed a challenge for government as attempts were made to fee equipment to remove the cluster. The seaweed has been used in some Caribbean islands as a source of nutrients for agricultural crops. Seaweed can be utilized. Seaweed is out into the land as fertilizer, as a nuisance. And you could apply it directly as a weed control barrier. It would stop weeds from growing in between your crops. And it's not going to harm the crops because our soils are very acidic, naturally, because it's volcanic low. So it would will, it will, it will boost plant growth. She blames governments of the region for part of the problems that presents itself in the Caribbean Sea. And it's far protocol. The government of the Caribbean have been lax in not implementing the, the, the requirements of the bond for waste from off the health of the Caribbean. So we will see more algae blooms, we will see death of, of coral reefs. And the alternative at this time. Changes to classic radio evening programming. This, as the Grenada Broadcasting Network reintroduces its simultaneous radio and television news. 
These would include current affairs programs on civics, agriculture, social affairs, and a host of other interesting topics. GBN's Head of Sales and Marketing, Janelle McDonnell, highlighted the changes taking effect from Monday. We will be expanding our radio programming, so from 6 o'clock you'll be hearing the programs you'd normally hear at 8 p.m. We've listened to the feedback from our listeners. They thought the programs were too short, so we found some more time. So from 6 p.m. on Monday, you'll be have these days a greater thrust to expand the sector. As on Wednesdays, something we've talked about for quite a while, Constitution Radio. And of course, on Thursdays, we have released it. That will continue at 8 p.m. So so it's quite an exciting lineup starting next week. Of course, that will impact the 6 p.m. news. Um, listeners on Classic Radio will now have news at 7 with viewers on GBN Television. And until 6.05, a full-length newscast will be aired from 7 p.m. simultaneously with the GBN Television News. And we close off the second segment this evening with a little bit of sad news from the cricket and bull. Legendary West Indies batsman Sir Everton Weeks has died at the age of 95. Weeks, who scored 4,455 runs at an average of 58.61 in 48 tests, is CWs alongside fellow West Indies greats Sir Clyde Walcott and Sir Frank Worrell. And CWI Cricket West Indies issued a statement today saying our hearts are heavy as we mourn the loss of an icon a legend, a hero. Our condolences go to his family, friends, and many fans. He, Walcott and Worrell were part of the first West Indies side to win a test in England in 1950. Our condolences indeed, 25. Still ahead this evening, Beverly, what's coming up? All right, when we return, Rastafarians give thanks. We'll tell you what they're thankful for. Stay with us. The Grenada Distillers Limited joins the government and people of Grenada, Caricou, and Pretty Martinique in the fight against COVID-19. Only together we can beat this pandemic. As a corporate citizen, we have temporarily stopped the production of rum, and our focus has been on the production of a sanitizing solution to assist in the fight against this dreadful pandemic. We have commenced free distribution to the senior citizens' homes, children's homes, and other vital organizations around the country, and made this product available to you at supermarkets and pharmacies island-wide. We encourage you to please listen and obey the guidelines issued by our health authority and the Royal Grenada Police Force. Together, and only together, we can beat COVID-19. It's new, innovative and classy, and it cut above the rest. Your one-stop shop for bathtubs, kitchener, customized doors and windows, and even a new paint job. We also sell quartz and solid surface countertops. At Eminent Hardware, visit us at Dusty Highway, Grand and St. George, or call telephone number 440-6757. Attention, attention. Spice Gas makes it easy for you. This Spice Gas Retailers Network will deliver the cooking gas directly to your home. This Spice Gas Box is allowing you to see how much gas is left in the bottle. Spice Gas Bottles comes with guarantee seal. No seal, no deal. Email sales at spicegas.net. We deliver Spice Gas Grenada cooking safely. Esplanade Mall, something for everyone. Go on a shopping spree today and experience some magic. The Carnage, the Grenville, or the Sutter's Hotspot. And you get sales and deals on all items. You can get these on potato, you can get these on salt fish, onion, garlic, mackerel, toilet paper. And we even have the currants and the raisin at $10 per pound. Lowest price item. 
Have a boy. Hey, hey, good old things. Hey, Daisy. Yeah. Bye, line boy. Your house looking a real good day. Boy, it's thanks to the hardworking and professional staff at the Housing Authority of Grenada. They handled me real nice. They did my plan, they did the construction, and I didn't even have to worry about that thing. They were there with me every step of the way, supervising the job, asking me about my concerns, giving me feedback as the house took shape. They were there from start to finish, and even put the keys in the palm of my hand. I give them an A++ for customer service. Oh, it's people from housing bad boy. Boy, not bad. Excellent. If you're thinking about constructing your home, why not consult the Housing Authority of Grenada? You can visit or check out their website, hag473.com. They go handle you. They go jog your blocks. They go draw your plan. They go talk your materials. <laughs> hey, man, where you going? The Housing Authority of Grenada is your choice for affordable housing and a stress-free construction experience. This is Dubai Flow. Now more than ever, Flow is working hard to keep you connected to the things that matter most. Your family, your work, and your favorite entertainment. We are also providing Flow study free of charge so students can stay connected and up to date with their schoolwork. And because your safety is our highest priority, you can manage your account from the safety of your own home through the MyFlow app. We are here for you, keeping you connected. The Learn to Swim Week kicks off. The program is in its sixth year, and organizers say strict COVID-19 protocols will be followed. The carded for April was postponed due to the COVID-19 regulations at the time. However, the Ministry of Health granted permission for the program to take place from next Monday, July 6th to the 10th. Deb Iswood, who spearheads this initiative, says there are regulations. We're only going to teach like two to four, maybe even one instructor and one swimmer. We're going to keep the group small and we're going to have your lesson and then we're asking people to leave so we don't get a big group congregating, you know. So we'll be sanitizing stations at each location and uh, again, the end, oh, if we have uh, whatever your swim group is, we're going to try to keep that little group. Over 6,000 Grenadians already deemed water safe, Eastwood is optimistic they will reach their target of 8,000 by 20. Grand Dance, we have three locations, down at Umbrellas, here at the Lifeguard Tower, Camera Home Park, and down at the Catholic Church. We have Market, Walton Beach, we go to the top, we have Satyrs, and then coming down we have Hope Beach, and then La Side Jess. And then in Corinth, we have Grenada. Since its inception, a number of young people have become gainfully employed. Beaches are not just for tourists. They need to be for the locals, too. And I've seen more and more people out and using them, and it makes me, it makes me really, really happy. But we've been able to develop swimmers uh, to the point where they go on to the national team. We have a young lady in the Limes uh, and a couple of teen lifeguards, about 12 of them, all started in the swimming program. The program is open to both adults and children interested in learning how to swim. Here's how you can register. Register, you should go to www.getgrenadaswimming.com. Let me say it again, getgrenadaswimming.com. If you go there, then you can sign up for your soon from one to five, but you have to pick a one hour lesson, like one to two or two to three, something like that. And then you come all week for the same hour. So, Christina John. GBN News. Well, David Runner's song, Give Thanks Children, is ringing in my ears because earlier, Bev did tell you that Rastafarians are giving thanks, and she told you, she'd tell you why. Well, that story is left to me. Two weeks after the Chinese government donated machinery and equipment to the Ministry of Agriculture, their farming organization is singing praises. They are happy for a donation of power tillers. Rena Pei has those good news. The Rastafarian Organization for Centralization is the first group for the past 14 years received a power tiller at a short ceremony at the Moran Propagation Station late last year. We received this power tiller. It's a very good initiative for an eye. It will help us in a long way because we use fork and hose and, you know, so getting you know, something like this, it will help us a long way. We might take three or four days to fork somewhere where we had a tiller, we might we will take less. So we will have more time instead of we fucking we will be planting, you know? So it will help us in a long way. 
Charles hopes the equipment will help the organization to soar to new heights. I'm hoping that he will bring the organization right up to his peak, like rise it from the ground to come up because we need lifting up, you know. And with the tiller, I think he will encourage more, more to come in and do the work because it's not only manpower, like machine power. So he will encourage more. So I think we will reach in a far way. The power tiller will assist in the preparation of the soil, giving crops the chance to be properly nourished. For GBN News, I am Rina Pear reporting. Time for another GBN ISA. Compliments Clevision Eye Center. You know us, but we knew. You feel at home with every visit. An experienced team offering personalized courtier service and trendy brand name lifestyle products. We're changing the vision care landscape one customer at a time. Clear Vision Eye Center. People and technology coming together to help you see the world with a clearer vision. Our ISO reporter submitted video footage of a minor accident caught on camera at Calavini in St. George. One bus runs into the back of another in the video, while a van trailing behind the two narrowly avoids the collision by running off the road. You can send in your photo and video submissions via WhatsApp on 405-3052 and our other social media platforms. And with the changing times comes a whole new way to do business. Our parents may have done their banking a different way. Communal's state-of-the-art online banking and international debit card allows members to do business with great ease. It's like literally having a branch in your very own hands. Need a loan? Apply online from the comfort of your own home anywhere in the world and your request will be dealt with remotely. Want to transfer between your accounts or another shareholder? No wait time for transactions to update. Voila! Who needs receipts when you can receive them via e-statements on your mobile device and save the environment? Not a communal member? You can join our family today by applying online. At Communal, we see you working hard to ensure that you save, invest, and grow. Communal, join us today. This will be the best financial decision you have ever made. My name is Hollis, Mr. Killamap, and I endorse this message. The Grenada Distillers Limited joins the government and people of Grenada, Caricou, and Petit Martinique in the fight against COVID-19. Only together we can beat this pandemic. As a corporate citizen, we have temporarily stopped the production of rum and of this dreadful pandemic. We have commenced free distribution to the senior citizens' homes, children's homes, and other vital organizations around the country, and made this product available to you at supermarkets and pharmacies island-wide. We encourage you to please listen and obey the guidelines issued by our health authority and the Royal Grenada Police Force. Together, and only together, we can beat COVID-19. Keeping an eye on the weather, this is GBN. We've got you covered. With light to moderate isolated showers, tonight's minimum temperature 25 degrees Celsius, winds east northeasterly to east southeasterly at 10 to 20 miles per hour, seas moderate, waves 4 to 6 feet in open water, tides low at 7 p.m. and high at 1 a.m. Sunrise tomorrow, 5.47. Weather for Thursday, July 2nd, partly cloudy, hazy and breezy, with light early morning showers. 
Weather for Friday, July 3rd, mostly fair, hazy and breezy. Plus, sports is up next. Well, good evening, sporting fan time. Jane Saunders will fill us in. The fitness of the form of skipper Jason Holder, who is nursing an ankle injury. The skipper did play today, marking just five runs, or making just five runs, as Holder's 11 scored 120 for five off 34 overs against a Craig Brathwaite 11. Holder had only played one... Well, it was pretty well, um, I picked up two wickets. Um, for 15 runs, both uh, five overs. So I'm glad of, um, of the outcome. Shema Holder did take two wickets today and he was just speaking about his performance. The West Indies will play on July 8th. That's the first test. Well, on the other side of the crease, it's been confirmed all wrong that Ben Stokes will captain England in the first test against the Windies in the absentee for the challenge. Getting the opportunity to, to captain um, England is a huge honour. And even if it's only the once, and something that, you know, obviously I'm really looking forward to if the opportunity presents it itself um but also at the same time i know i'm only stepping in um to um so yeah i don't i don't know if i can really say much more on it to be honest but it's a it's a huge thing to think about uh, emirates in old trafford on monday july many have wondered now it's official why vice president dr kisho shallow said the final decision will be with president ricky scarrett but if it were up to him he wouldn't get the support dr you know performance as a leader and based on those reasons I would not be able to support him at this point. Official correspondence has yet come from Dave Cameron. All right, CPL fans, uh, at the edge of your seats, well, you'll have to stay there a while longer as the Caribbean Premier League remains mom of the 2020 season, which is scheduled to run in company chairman Douglas Camacho. Speaking to iSports, Camacho said the Hilton Hotel will be the biosecure venue for the teams, with the TNT government expected to put some... By this Thursday, we anticipate the formal uh, direction from cabinet with regards to what all you of course, the local community, even if they can't physically go excited by the prospect. And who knows? A little bit of luck on with um, fans. In Taruba, hosting the first third of matches before the action switches to the Queen's Park Oval for the next third before returning to Taruba for the final third of matches. Before all of that, players will be welcomed at the Sir Frank Worrell ground in St. Augustine. King kept on coming. Yo. Arrangements are being made to have the University of the West Indies cricket field as a secure area to train in a very controlled way. All right, let's head to the dugout to catch up with this batting star. And this year's tournament in Australia is going to take place. Well, that is left. He wouldn't be pleased if the World Cup is cancelled. He was speaking on iSports. West Indies batsman Lendl Simmons has made a name for himself, mainly in T20 cricket. The opener from Trinidad and Tobago tasted World Cup success with the regional side also. As such, should this year's tournament be cancelled in Australia due to COVID-19, he is going to feel the pain. I must say I'm really disappointed about that because I was really looking forward to this World Cup. Um, not to say I'm, I'm, I'm at the end of my career, but we are all coming to the end of our camp. People is calling for his throat that he's too old and he's 40 and he's still doing well. So it doesn't matter how, how, how good you do at, at the age. When he wants to play next year's T20 World Cup in India at the age of 36, he says there are no guarantees as to what can happen as he's getting older. Um, yes, um, retirement is on my mind, but I say I retire like age 37, 36, 37. Harder to keep yourself fit. But after of, of keeping up with the younger ones who are the age of 25, 26, who naturally fit. So it's it's a bit of competition as well. And Dylan, and he made the most of it next season. Yeah, I must say I, I enjoy playing for the cricket. I enjoy playing for Trinidad. But... Um, 
and I already made myself available for the 40 next year. I call the president, I have to call the coach and the selectors and let them know so that I'm available for the full season. From 97 first class games, Simmons has 11 hundreds and 25 50s and the average is 33.34. For action, Cricket Australia in unison with the rest, all that has been postponed. The release from Cricket Australia laid out the factors for the decision, citing the short length of the series, the significant chills and volunteers. New dates will be announced. begins in Trinidad where it has been a hotbed for the last couple of days. A woman four months pregnant is the lone fatality after hours of confrontation between the police and protesters on Tuesday. The mother of five was shot as she stood off the eastbound lane. It is not clear if she was shot by criminal elements or by the police. She died while being treated at hospital. We get more on that story from our sister station TV6. You have the problem. You have the problem with me now, boy, right? I work. I don't ask. I don't beg nobody for nothing. I don't wrong nobody. I don't rob. I don't thief. I willing to roll with my woman. And here my, my child, mother, I got shoot. Well, I no personal the home. When I come home, when, when, when I come home and I, and I fly to the hospital, I see my child, mother, fighting for her life. I ask the doctor like a big man. I say, doc, if I know, say no again, she the blood. It hurt me to know I do be no, no activities and go through this. And her sex strength of mine without a child, mother. Four with she and three and two on the outside. It really hurt me. And let me tell you something. Guy give a big man at the end of the day. And if was a civilian kill my child, mother, I'd have killed all them and the parents. Because I, I don't take long thing. And when I had the same man, I had a dangerous fellow when I had the same man. It's, and I all had the same boy. Thank you very respect. much. It's a very emotional scene in Beetham Gardens yeah, this evening. Meanwhile, the... Come on, come on. Come on, go down. Officers clashing with protesters in Kokorit. The officers repeatedly asking protesters to go home. protest follows police shooting and killing three men in Mova last Saturday. Back to Tuesday, police had to be called in as well as a burning car was blocking the roadway. However, police have since moved in and cleared the roadway so people can pass. Just as we're speaking here now, though, we're seeing another police vehicle arriving here. Uh, there's a, another a third vehicle arriving from that way and we saw a, a tractor has also pulled up with the police. That and tractor was used to remove again. the tires from the protest. Police told us there were no arrests there. And it was not just restricted to Northern Trinidad. And check out what happened as a TV6 crew tried to leave Port of Spain Tuesday afternoon near Beetham Gardens. Thankfully, our crew was able to get out of the situation safely. And Sal Gibbs, TV6 News. And moving further afield now, the United States has registered its biggest daily jump in coronavirus cases since the start of the pandemic. There were 46,000 new infections in the U.S. on Tuesday. But the country's top expert on infectious diseases is warning that number would start to double if people do not follow the health recommendations. We get details in this report. Fauci's been doing. This was ominous congressional testimony about the spread of COVID-19 in the U.S. It puts the entire country at risk. We are now having 40 plus thousand new cases a day. I would not be surprised if we go up to 100,000 a day if this does not turn around. And so I am very concerned. 
are all having to rethink their reopening plans as cases spike. The U.S. still lags in testing, contact tracing, social distancing, and mask usage. White House health advisors bemoaned this in their testimony. And I'm not satisfied with what's going on because we're going in the wrong direction. If you look at the curves of the new cases. So we've really got to do something about that and we need to do it quickly. Short answer to your question is that clearly we are not in total control right now. A recurring theme was a lack of concern among sections of the population who refused to take even minimum protections for themselves and others, and their suspicion of science in general. But senators also repeatedly criticized a president who refuses to wear a mask and has been urging a return to normality. These two parallel messaging operations. It's but the agencies represented here today have social media followings of about 5 million people. The President of the United States has a social media following of 82. During a speech in his hometown of Wilmington, Delaware. The President gives no direction and he pits us against one another. We can't continue like this. Half recovering and half getting worse. We can't continue. Half wearing masks and half rejecting science. But in fact, there is now consensus among the Republican leadership that mask wearing should be encouraged, something the White House press secretary said the president has no... ...for their safety and to follow what their local jurisdictions say. Yet the president is expected at Mount Rushmore on Friday to mark the beginning of the Independence Day. And when we come back, a recap of the main points in tonight's newscast. This is News at 7. Do stay with us. Recapping the main points in the news this evening, Akim Andrew facing fresh fraud charges four months after lenience was extended by the court. Moral responsibility of Liet's, as Liet's fate hangs in the balance. And NDC calls for a feasibility study on Hillsborough Jetty and Kariakou. And we got the sad news that the legendary West Indies player, F. Sir Everton Weeks, he's passed away at the age of 95. And then around the globe, a pregnant vaccine. Now, if you missed any part of this newscast, a repeat of it will be broadcast at 10 o'clock tonight. Continue to follow us online at the GBN.gd or GBN Television Facebook page and YouTube channel for these and other top stories. I'm Beverly Tellisford. And I'm Wooded Campbell. We'll see you again on Friday.